Hey everybody, it's Derek Lamartin from CodeOpinion.com. Recently, I read a few blogs and watched a couple of videos that compare gRPC with REST and GraphQL. Most make the claim that gRPC is, or should be, the de facto standard way to communicate between services. The problem is, they don't really ever give a reason why they think that, or make that statement. Rather, what I'd like to see, and what I'll provide, is kind of given situations and contexts where I think gRPC makes sense, and where I would avoid it. This video is brought to you by EventStoreDB, the stream database built from the ground up for event sourcing, CQRS, and event-driven microservices. For more on EventStoreDB, check out the link in the description. Now, one place that I can see gRPC being useful is where things are naturally request response. And one of those is for queries or doing some type of UI or view composition. But that doesn't mean that it's service to service. So if we're talking about we need to provide some type of UI or some type of API response um, to our client that's gonna give them data about a particular screen that they're looking at or whatever the case may be, we can do that and we have to do that composition to get all that data from various services. And that's where gRPC comes in. So if we have a client, let's say it's a browser, make a request to some backend for front end or API gateway, at this point, it could be using gRPC to reach out to all the different services to then get the data that it needs to build out kind of what that view model or that UI is that it can then return to the client. Typically, you'd see something like an HTTP API be, being used here because again, it's in the same fashion. You want kind of request response so you can build up what that view model is. To me, this is a really good use case of where gRPC could work well. First, let's talk about direct communication from service to service. Now, whether we were talking about a monolith or kind of a distributed application like this, let's say these are all these different um, kind of boxes, circles are different services, and we have service to service communication, let's say with gRPC. The problem here, I call this the distributed turd pile. There really is no different fundamentally between this and a monolith in terms of coupling. Just because you're doing it over gRPC in a contract, that really doesn't change anything. You're really just adding a network. You're not less coupled than you are in a monolith. In most of the articles and videos I read, what I'm about to illustrate is really what people advocate, which I completely do not advocate for, which is direct service to service communication using something like gRPC. And the problem is, is really if you're trying to build kind of a resilient system, it's gonna be much more difficult when you're doing service to service direct communication. So we have a client, makes a request to service A, hit, hits its database, performs some maybe state change, it calls service B, it has to do something with some external service. And when we're calling this, if we're working on service A, we just know we're calling service B. We don't really know behind the scenes what it's ultimately doing. So then we call service C, because we need to do some other action to it to kind of perform some type of workflow that we're doing. It re reaches out to its database, but we don't really know from service A that service C ends up calling service D. And again, what happens here, if all of this is a direct communication and service C calls service D and service D fails, what do we do now? How do we deal with backtracking or undoing everything that we previously did to our own database, to what service B to the external system, what service C did? We have to deal with this and there's really no distributed transaction to roll all this back like we might have with using a single database in a monolith. So really what I'm describing here is a long running business process and workflow that involves many different services. And in that particular situation, I wouldn't wanna use gRPC, rather I'd rather use messaging and decouple and temporarily decouple so that no service necessarily needs to, all of them need to be online to make the workflow work. Rather what we're gonna do is we're gonna have our client send a message or a request to our service but our service at that point, if it needs to interact with another service, it's just going to basically be sending a message to a broker, which is ultimately going to a queue. So from there, our original client requests, we're done, we're non-blocking. And our message sitting in our queue, it could be processed immediately if our other service is available. Maybe it may take some time, a few minutes, however long, eventually some service that has to get that request that's going to process it will pick it up process it, be a part of that workflow, do what it needs to do. But if when you're used to kind of request response, kind of in that uh, direct communication fashion, you want a response. But asynchronous messaging still allows you to do that with request reply. So that means that we can have our service that process that message, create a reply, send that separately to a separate queue, 
that the original service can get that reply, process it, and maybe if you need to let the client know, it can use a, some type of WebSocket or push notification, whatever the case may be, but you can still kind of deal with this request response, request re uh, reply with asynchronous messaging. This allows you to temporally decouple. No, all the services don't need to all be online and functioning correctly for your workflow to be processed. If something is unavailable, the workflow just doesn't fail abruptly. It's just pause, just waiting for the service to process a message and continue the workflow. So earlier I was mentioning for workflows and service to service communication, I don't think gRPC is a great idea, but it depends on where the originating start of a request happens from. My first example, I was using this, where I had a client making a call to say service A, service A was doing something that needed to call another service. And again, the problem there is failures. However, when we're talking about messaging, and I was mentioning it earlier, if we're gonna have service to service communication, it's different if the originating is starting from a message that is pulled from a queue or from a topic from a broker because you have a little bit more resiliency and you don't have a user, an end user at the end of the line, seeing what potentially has failed and dealing with that down the chain. So what that means is when we have a message that's sent, say to service A that we pick up, if service A needs to call service B over gRPC and there's a failure, well, we have a lot of different options here in, deal, in terms of dealing with this failure. We could just have an automatic retry because it could be just a transient error. We could have an exponential back off. We could then, if there's an even, uh, it continues failing because service B is unavailable, for example, we could just throw that message into a dead letter queue and process it separately later. We have a lot more options and a lot more resiliency we can deal with if there are failures down the chain when we need to call from service to service. So the key here is where did the request originate? If it started from an end user, it's gonna be more difficult, like I started at the very beginning, to deal with failures. If it started from a message asynchronously, then you have a lot more options of dealing with failures and fault tolerance. So another really good situation that I think gRPC can fit well and does is when you're interacting with infrastructure, for example, a database. But a database isn't a service. And my definition of a service is it's the authority of a set of business capabilities and then the data behind that. The key part about there is business capabilities. It's something that's a part of workflows and business processes in your system. A database is just infrastructure. As an example of this, EventStoryDB, which sponsored this video, guess what, has gRPC clients. And that kind of just makes sense when you really think about how you're interacting with your database, the underlying client, why not use gRPC? Seems like a natural fit in this particular use case. So where do I think gRPC makes sense? Well, first view composition, because something like that is naturally request response, but you're not doing service to service. You're gonna have at least some place that you're doing that composition. And to me, gRPC can make sense there. The second is infrastructure, like I just mentioned, which again, it's not a service, it's not a part of your workflow, but it could be something that even you're creating or something similar to a database, like I mentioned with Event Store, but it could be something that you're creating that's more kind of in a supporting role. It's not a part of the business processes, but it's something that you need to call that's gonna be direct to it to get data back. Lastly, it is important where it originates. If you're gonna do, for some reason, service to service or service to infrastructure, it depends where it originates. And it's more, it's helpful if it's originating from a message, from a queue or from a broker, so that you have more resiliency on how you wanna handle when you can't make that direct call if there's a failure. So where would I avoid gRPC? Things like service to service communication that are involved with workflow and business processes like I mentioned at the very beginning. I would rather use messaging there in orchestration or event choreography to decouple completely my services. So I'm not doing that direct communication. I'm temporarily decoupled. I'm sending messages saying I want something to happen. Maybe I get a reply or an event back that I can process and do workflow through that means rather than direct communication from service to service. But as well, where things originate matters here. Just like I mentioned, if something's done from a message, it's processed from a message, it, you have more options there. If the originating request came from a client and then you're going client to service to service and this big call chain, it, you really are in a distributed monolith and a distributed turd pile. It's gonna be really hard to manage because you're gonna have added latency from calls from the network. And again, everything needs to be online for anything to work correctly.
So you may be yelling at me saying, hey, Derek, but gRPC has async non-blocking. But that's not the same thing. Because really what I'm referring to here, again, is about service to service. If you're making calls from service to service, everything still needs to be online, regardless of whether you're using the blocking synchronous or non-blocking async. If you're interested in software architecture and design and you want to talk to other developers about it, check out the links in the description to join my channel or you can get access to a private Discord server. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you have any thoughts or questions, make sure to leave a comment and please subscribe for more videos on software architecture and design. Thanks.